So this is a piece of Western Red Cedar. I'm not 100%. It might be Sequoia, because, Sequoia Redwood, because it's um, super wide grain. And the Sequoia that grows around here is really wide grain, and it's um, really wet wood. But this this uh, piece of wood here is bone dry. It's been drying for years. It's uh, 7 feet long, 20, about 20 inches wide, and 3 inches thick. What I'm doing there is cutting a slot because I'm putting LED lights inside this. It, it's got to have LED lights if it's going to be the world's coolest head, uh, headboard, right? So there I'm just using my uh, 170 with a uh, still MS 170 with a 16-inch cannon bar on there. But you could use a normal chainsaw and a normal bar to do this. Just the main thing about chainsaw carving, everybody, is safety first, you know. Like have your eye protection, ear protection, steel toes, chainsaw pants, I'm not, even though I'm not wearing mine. That's a Cutsall Extreme Shaping Disc. I'm using that instead of the flapping wheel right now because it's really, that's a good thing to use, good tool to use to like put curves and stuff in the wood. <clears throat> um, I don't suggest it for the very beginners or if you're not that strong and you can't grip your tool too powerfully because if that thing kicks, it really takes off and uh, it can be super dangerous. It's so aggressive. Just make sure you got a good grip on your grinder. I should have that uh, shield thing on there, but I unfortunately I don't. But I suggest that you do have your guard on. And here's a 50 grit sanding flap disc. Okay, I think it might even be a metalworking disc. So I'm just kind of getting rid of the uh, deep cuts that I did with that burn. Just kind of rounding th everything off. This isn't the final part of the sanding that I'm going to do for the top. Later on, you'll see me use a orbit sander with 80 grit. And I'm going to have a sip of my water. This voiceover is going to be about uh, 24 minutes, I think. So you see there, it's pretty smooth. I like the shape of it. Um, I didn't want to take it down anymore because I was getting pretty thin to the top channel inside there. It goes about an inch up, up inside there for the lights because I hate it when you're able to see the LED lights, if I didn't already say that. So you get a better visual of it over there. Anybody can do this. Just take your time. And you know, like, <clears throat> how am I going to say this? See the white grain there? There's the wood spirit dead center. We got an owl on the right and an owl on the left. Um, this carving, is, I did it for me. I've wanted to do one for like three or four years. And I think when I'm doing a carving for myself, I have a lot more fun than commission pieces or people wanting me to carve something or something that I'm like you know you guys know if you're a beginning artist how you struggle when you're learning something new right like these owls I didn't I spent about 10 minutes with the dremel on this carving I didn't spend much dremel time on this all because it's not about looking close at it it's about standing back at the end of the bed and seeing the whole piece not each individual thing right it's Art's never about like getting a magnifying glass and looking up close at it. It's about standing back and seeing the main image. So you see, I like how that wood spirit sunk back there as hair is blowing out from the back. And I'm just having a super fun time carving this. You know, I think that's uh, probably <clears throat> when you're doing something for yourself, it, you're learning more, you're having fun, and just... Uh, you, you just enjoy what you're doing. It's a passion. That's what this is totally is, is a passion, right? So, okay, so there I got uh, like a thousand trees drawn on, 20 moons, uh, 30 koi fish, and uh, I just don't know what I'm going to carve yet, but we'll figure it out here soon. So I got a owl there. I got a moon up top. There's a tree with some mountains in the background, the wood spirit mountains, and there's a rising sun. And another owl. Those are the guardian owls, by the way. And you can see there I got the background carved. Just cuts, did some quick chainsaw marks in there just to give it a flow. Nothing's perfect on this. Like, look at the moons. They're, they're not perfectly round. And I could have made them perfectly round. But I just don't care. Now this, uh, the die grinder, it's the Makita 800C. This is the workhorse. It's the fastest with the most power. David Grass bought me this one. Thank you, Mr. David Grass. And he sent it to me from Texas, I believe. And uh, this, and that's a Cutsall um, Flame Burr, 
quarter inch. Thanks again for sending that, Mr. Grass, kicking ass. So here we go. Another look at the headboard. You see that black uh, line through the owl in the sun there, the rising sun? That's bark. And I just didn't care it was there. So what I'm going to do before I burn it is just quickly hit it with the uh, sander here. That's belt sanding, so it's emery cloth, on, so it's cloth on the back. That's a ready rod. That's a lock washing nut. Okay, and that's a lock washing nut and washer on the top. So that's how easy you make your sander. And that um, handle that I got there is from a grinder because those sandpaper, sometimes if you hit your finger, it will take some skin off. So I made it has a little thing on it. So there's some funny eyes in the owl. Don't care. There's a funny moon, sunny, funny tree, wicked wood spirit. No eyes. Don't care. Look at the top of the sun. Square. Don't care. Look at that owl. Don't care. Look at the mountains. Don't care. Having fun. Don't care. World's coolest headboard. And I'm not saying that in an arrogant way. Like I think I'm the world's best carver. Or I just think it's the world's best headboard. <laughs> I think that. That doesn't mean that you have to think that. So here I'm doing some wood burning. Getting uh, in the deep, like the farthest parts. So you'll see like I burnt inside the eyes there. I'll do the nostrils in, in where the hair is deeper. It gives you a, an effect after you, because I'm going to go over it and sand it again. So there I'm doing the nostrils. And you'll see I'll do each corner of the lips because I carve deep to make the lips kind of the bottom lip look round. I could have carved real eyes on this wood spirit. Most of the real eyes I carved kind of look funny. So I said they look better without eyes. So there you go. There's the owl, moon, tree, spirit, sun, owl the background and the mountains how about that now let's hit it again with the sounder and just have a good time i spent about four days on this world's coolest headboard <clears throat> because like i didn't spend a lot of time carving it i spent a lot of time um finishing it with the fin with the clear coats so you can see how sanding it so the see how i burnt the deeper stuff stays darker Okay, so it's upside down. So this is the Mampa cutter. It's one eighth. It's in your Dremel. Just Google Mampa tools. It's ex this is an expensive cutter, but it's awesome. So I'm carving the channel deeper and smoother to get the strip lights in there. Well, it's upside down, and I'm doing this one hand, like I'm holding my camera with one hand. I got my hand on the Dremel, so it's not going that smooth, and it goes a lot smoother smoother after I put the phone the camera the phone camera down. So I'm blowing it out, and then I'll give it a wood burn to make it dark again so you can see the depth in there. It's like more than an inch, I think. Hide those lights up in there really good. And then uh, I'm going to give it a burn, like I said, and then I will um, give it a clear coat. So when I uh, got it upside down, I make sure I got everything. And... Um, the, the sticky stuff on the LED strip lights will stick a lot better to the clear coat. Okay, so this is part what makes it the coolest headboard in the world. There are the side, the night tables. They're being attached to the headboard itself. That's the same cedar. And it's just from a different piece, but it's the exact same wood. I'm just kind of eyeballing it. Yep, yeah, okay, it seems like it's going okay. So... Here's a little, I'm being a fool with the camera. Is it upside down or whatever? Which way you go? Um, what was I saying? Sometimes these long voiceovers get to me. Um, I forget what I was saying. Is it upside down? I don't know if it's upside down. Okay, there you go. It's upside down. Huh. Okay, so here's the clear coat. And uh, here's a bit good time to say hello to everybody. And uh, Liz, thanks for the candies. And I, it's great. Everybody, Liz is a long time subscriber and a great friend and I love her a lot since she's up uh, she lives in um, Oregon but she's in Texas right now visiting her father's getting older in age and she thought it would be a good time to go see him so I hope you're doing good Liz so there's the two side tables I got I made one for each side so what I'm doing here is Shosugi Ban I'm just sanding it off smooth Shosugi Ban is 
a way to preserve the wood. The old Japanese did it. They would, you know, they would build their houses. This is hundreds of years ago. They'd build their house and they would uh, burn the outside of the house and it would preserve the wood. But us artists burn the wood and clean it and it really brings out the grain and makes the grain pop. So you can see there how how big I'm. Don't look at the cracks in the wood, but you'll see it's kind of um, on the top here. I'm not going too deep because the more that you burn it, the, the the bigger bumps you'll get in it. So I'm just going pretty quick with a steady hand on the top here. But on the front, front I burnt it really deep because I want it to be like stairs, kind of like bumpy. I'll show you after. So um, just have a good time. If you're not having a good time, don't do it. And you know, every single time I'm doing something, painting or whatever it is, it's just an experiment. Now here's a nylon brush from my Amazon store. Almost all the tools I use are in my Amazon store listed below in the description. So you see how it's peeling away there? The stuff there, stuff, thing, stuff. That's how deep I burnt the front. And then I got the other one burnt too. I didn't measure these, um, these uh, sideboards or whatever nightstands, I didn't measure them so they're not the same length and I just didn't care. Because I just get shit done. That's the bottom line. Okay, so the more that you use this nylon wheel or scotch bright, the whiter the whiter the wood's gonna get, like with the lights and the darks. So here you go, here's me showing you. Um so that would be it's kinda hard to see. On the see the front there, how it's kind of bumpy. That's what the Shosugi pooped her pants does. So, there's that would be face grain, that would be edge grain, this would be end grain looking at the butt, that would be end grain, and then this would be face grain right here. I normally do the show Susie, Susie pooped her pants with the uh, face grain, not the edge grain, because the edge grain is just lines, right? Okay, so there's the face grain. See how it's kind of bumpy, how huh? I'm kind of trying to slide my fingers and you can see it. So that's face grain. Sorry, that would, yeah, face grain. Here's edge grain. And no, that first thing would have been end grain. Hello, hello. There's, uh, look how fat I am. I don't even know why I'm carving this headboard. Like, uh, I better lose some weight, as I'll say later in the video for girls to come over and check out the new headboard, you know, like uh, test it out. But I think I need to drop a couple hundred pounds before that, I have a chance of that happening. Anyways, good music playing. I forget what it was, but uh, you can just see I'm happy doing it. And it wasn't something I was uh, rushing to get done. I just, I just don't care. If you do it for yourself, enjoy every moment of it. And it's all an experiment. Those jaw horses are um, really handy to have on a project like this. I didn't need to film doing all this and setting it up, but it just kind of shows you guys more really kind of like behind the scenes what's happening, right? So I'm just getting it set in there to put the uh, night stands or whatever, the end board tables. I guess they would call them night tables, night stands. Lock a jaw horse up, but not too tight because you don't want to break that bottom lip, right? Just make it so it stands nice. And um, like I said, I could have edited this part out. But uh, so, like I said, they were not the same sizes, the end stands. So I want to make sure I got the longer side on, on my side. Because the other side will be the girl's side and. I don't want it to be too big because she will have lots of makeup and stuff and stuff and stuff on there. So I got the longer side. That's just that. All right. So still loving the music, I guess, was playing. So I got the wood glue on there. <clears throat> One thing I didn't do, I didn't make sure the bot, like where the you see all the white there, that's wood glue. I didn't make sure it was square cut. So I got the wood glue on my, you can see it under, under the board there. So it's not sitting 100% flush, if you know what I mean. Like it's flat, but there's a dip inside there. 
so it doesn't really I those are um, timber screws that I'm putting in there too way stronger than uh, uh, deck screws and um, but it's just not really sitting flush you'll see it move a bit here once I'm done worrying about the glue so make sure you get a nice flush joint that's what I'm trying to say the joint here wasn't that flush so I got the square there I'm not even sure if my that's a that square is 20 years old so I'm not even too sure if that square is really square but so what I figured because I had to lift it up the quicker that I put this I put another couple screws in the bottom too and I put a I, I went and bought some uh, like nine inch timber screws and I put them through the back of the headboard and it goes in a slope down to the table. So, but it's solid now. It's it's set up and it's sold. I'll show you guys after. But the quicker I flip, see how it's kind of sagging? But if I flip it so it's the right way up and down, it doesn't sag. It's perfect. And then the, then once I, go, I flip it, I think I spray it a bit and I give it a day for that glue to dry proper. That's like the things that take a bit longer, right? Okay, so there I'm using another timber screw. <clears throat> Excuse me. So here's just some more real time uh, flipping the piece over. I don't know what I'm looking at, but just more real time kind of stuff so you guys can see the trails and errors and you know, at this point, it's not that, it's light. It's not that heavy, but it's not that light. It's kind of more awkward than anything. There you go, Ben. Boof. Look at those head, look at those night stands. Huh? Sooner or later, in my bedroom where this is going, I'm getting, uh, I'm getting all the floors, new floors upstairs. So sooner or later, I will, once I get the new floors, I will put a, like a carve a stick and put it there as like a, a leg for a table, but there's no need to do it right now. I hope this microphone's working. So just more real time kind of stuff for you. So here I am with the square again. Not really that you guys can see, but it seems like it's pretty damn square to me. My old partner at roofing, Timmy. My roofing company name was Top Dog, D-A-W-G Roofing. And my partner, Tim, I called him T-Dog. Um, he always liked, liked it when I was doing stuff besides roofing. Like, say, if there was a chimney that the homeowners didn't want up and they wanted us to tear down the chimney. Tim would like me to do that st kind of stuff because he was super fast at laying down the shingles like Duraid. But I was fast at uh, taking the part of the chimneys and shit. There you go. It works. It's square enough to me. Drake's not falling off the table. Because I get shit done. And that's all I'm doing with this headboard is getting shit done. And that's all you need to do. Looks pretty square to me. See the different colors in that wood. When you get like a black kind of in the wood like that, it's a good indi indicator that there was like a old nail stuck in there or something. A little bit of wood glue there. No big deal. But so, yeah, when I had it flipped up this way, I went down through the headboard with like 9-inch or 10-inch timber screws that were a lot thicker, a lot bigger, and drove those pieces in there, and they're, they're never coming off. So anybody can do this. You can get a 2 by 12 You might not be able to get room for the um, LED lights, but you can put uh, lights in the backboard or behind it, whatever you want to do. So here I am looking at the top. So that's edge grain. That's like straight lines. Okay. This is face grain. You see how it's kind of layered? You'll see more after. Face grain. Sorry, sometimes because my injury, I get things confused. There I am again with the uh, 50 grit <laughs> sanding disc on there, just kind of rounding everything off a bit. In a few seconds here, you're going to see my orbit sander. And that's 80 grit on there, and that's all I take it to. And then you're going to see the wood burning that I do on it. If anybody has any ideas if I should make videos, and like diff, speed things up, slow things down, I'd love to hear in the comments. So it's sounded to as good as I want to get it there. 
Okay, I missed a spot. No big deal. And I'm going to lightly burn it and wait till you guys see the colors pop once I burn it. Get that piece off there. I just like giving you guys full visuals of it. So here's the burn. Without this burn, it's a propane mount torch. I'm just trying to do consistent burn all the way across. Same speed, same line, and same uh, thickness away from it. Look at those grains pop. Watch this. There is West Coast Art right there. Like the top part of the headboard. That's like total West Coast native kind of type art, in my opinion. And it also could be like carving fusion art. Well, it is because I love doing stuff like this. So see how I'm just trying to do a consist consistent speed. I got the new Top Gun playing in the background. I don't know if you guys can hear it. And I'm not even watching it. And this is my third time doing this voiceover. Look at those colors pop. Isn't that beautiful? I think you can do this with pine wood, you know, and for this kind of Shosugi ban, you know, the wider the grain is, the better it's going to look. Because you see those, see how it's wide? Like It looks like an eye there, right where the torch is. Doesn't that look like an eye? Looks like a whale eye. The wider the grain is, the better it's going to look. But again, everything's just my opinion. Okay, so what I did, I don't know what I did. Just giving you guys a, a visual of it. Or did I clear coat it yet? No, I don't know. Okay, so what I did, now I'm going to clear coat it. This is the Rust Oldham clear satin. Uh, I don't know how you say it, Rust Oleum or something. I'm not too sure. I don't care. I call it Rust Oldham. And I'm pretty sure they sell that stuff around the world. Or you can use any clear coat you want. This clear coat really doesn't work good. Look at the color in there. This clear coat really doesn't work too good for outdoors. But this is an indoor bedroom headboard, right? Well, the coolest headboard in the world. So it's indoor. So I think I did maybe like four coats. And the big, best, biggest thing about this clear coat, I try to explain it in all my videos. It took me so long to understand, and it's such a simple thing to register. And I'm going to say it so you will, it will register to you for the very beginners. Let your clear coat dry. Spray it on. Give it a good day to dry. When that dries, it acts like a layer of plastic on your carving. Because in the, when you're doing a wood carving, even though it's the same piece of wood, you get some soft spots, you get some hard spots. The hard spots are not going to absorb the, the spray in as much as the soft spots. So the hard spots are going to go stay shiny. The soft spots are going to get dull. But if you spray it and you give it a good day or whatever, whatever the instructions say to let it sit and dry, your whole piece is going to be like there's a layer of plastic on it. So then when you have you then you come there the next day or the day after and you spray it, you're spraying over top of a layer of a plastic and everything will be the same. Does that make sense to you? That's the way I tell myself everything will be the same. And even if it's not, everything's not the same on the second day, come back on a third day. See, here I am leaving the shop. Saying, that's enough, Jordy. Let it dry. Because if you keep on spraying it the same day, you're just going to waste your spray. The wood's going to keep sucking it up. You're going to get flat spots. You're going to get shiny spots. Let it dry. Let it cure. Hello. Goodbye. You'll give yourself, um, you'll save yourself money and you'll save yourself time. So here's the next day. I don't know if you look on that headboard, you can see maybe see some flat spots and maybe see some shiny spots. But now when I give it a spray today, outdoors, nice and sunny, everything's going to be consistent. Okay, it's all going to be consistent because I have that layer of, pla it's not plastic or polyurethane or whatever it is on there. Nice clouds. Okay, so here's a full visual overhead. Shopping buggies, that's what I use for my firewood now. And uh, here's a carbon fusion brake. 
a sponsored dog treat video. Give your dogs these treats. They love the treats. This guy doesn't stop barking at me till I give him the treats, so I got to give him treats all the time. He's a big dog. He gets lots of treats. So there's the Carve Infusion van, van, car truck. <clears throat> you guys ever see one of those before? With the headboard in the back, taking it home. So I think this is three days after I started it, or four days. What's that there, Jordy, you see? What is that you see? It looks like Scott brought some uh, wood beams home from work. Gonna have to get my chainsaw cut into it, see what type of wood it is. So I did, and if you ask me, it's heavy. That kind of looks like gum wood. I've carved gum wood before, not a fan of it. But it's um, there's the back of the uh, van car truck. And here's the headboard in my carport at home. If I forget to say it, we got uh, construction screws and screwed it to the wall into the beams. Okay, we got construct long five inch construction screws. Okay, so here it is on the wall. We used five inch construction screws and screwed it into the beam, two on each side and two in the center. It will never come off. This is a light I got, it came in a set of two. For $60 off Amazon, it's in my Amazon store listed below. Just showing you guys, it's got a three-point iron swing. And it was like, there's my buddy L. L, if you watch this video, thank you so much for the help. Um, I couldn't have put this board up with all your help. Uh, he put those lights up for me too. Al's, uh, you can see these lights are dim dimmable too. Um, I'm just not good at installing things on the walls and stuff because I make too many holes. So there's the koi fish that I carved a month back couple months back um, nobody wanted to buy that one they came to my chainsaw carving tent so there's a reason like I, I tried to sell it for 150 bucks nobody wanted it so there's a reason for everything they didn't want to buy it because they knew that eventually I'd want to put it above my headboard and there it is look at that abracadabra so super happy I'm like I don't keep the lights like that that's just for like a carving fusion art gallery right there Carving Fusion, coolest headboard in the world, art gallery. And just some camera tricks, I guess. So here's more Carving Fusion uh, art world gallery here. <laughs> oh, here's some more. Oh, the lights are off. The main light's off in my bedroom now. And uh, there's just a nice plain view of it. There's lights off with the lights. So I'm just showing you a quick demonstration of how those lights move around. And, um, yeah, they work deadly. Love them. They're dimmable, too, like I showed you. And, um, yep, more Card Infusion Art Gallery. And uh, here we go. Let's see what's happening next. There's just the full, uh, oh, yeah, don't forget to eat your chicken and rice soup with a nice ice-cold glass of milk. Love this chicken and ice soup. Okay, okay. Go. so the strip lights showed up at 9 o'clock p.m. from Amazon. I just got them in. You can't see them. Even when you're lying on the bed, you can't see them. With this headboard, you know, once you put pillows on there, you're going to lose some of the stuff, but who cares? It is what it is. It's the widest piece of wood I had, and um, I think it turned out pretty good, considering I didn't spend that long carving it. So here's the remote control. You guys can see how far away I am. Let's uh, turn the lights on. There we got the red color. Okay, let's do yellow. So these are pretty good lights, purple, blue. So let's start, let's, we can do the multicolor lights here. Okay, these lights are in my Amazon store under a video. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off these lights here. One, two, keep the main lights on, and then we'll turn the main lights off. Okay, how about that? Let's turn them off. Okay, the two overhead lamps are turned off. This my light in my bedroom's on. Let's turn the lights on. How about that? I think the girls are gonna like that. There is also a function for these, so when you're cranking music, like um, you'll see on the remote here, the flash to the music. I don't know if you can see, but whatever. Okay, so let's turn the main lights off. And is this the world's coolest headboard 
Three, two, one. This is for all the tea in China. All the soya sauce in Hong Kong. Oh, look at that. <laughs> That's what I'm dreaming about right there. Oh, man, I love it. Is that so cool? Is that so cool? And I'm not just saying it because I made it. Uh, yeah, let's see what else we got here. I like it when they change colors slower. So these, um, these lights do hook up to your phone so you can control it more with your phone too. But come on. World's coolest headboard right there. Don't you think? I think. And I don't care if you think it's not anyways, because I think it's the world's coolest headboard. Evo Brick would probably say, well, if there was a skull in the middle there and the eagle's on the side, not owls. Anyways, thanks for watching the video, everybody. This was a super fun project. I still, once I post, post this on Facebook, I bet you some friends uh, locally are going to ask me how much I charge for these. It's not cheap. I'll just say that. And when I tell them the price, they're probably not going to want to pay for it. But when you when you like say, okay, I enjoyed carving this for myself. All right. I enjoyed carving it for myself. I loved it. I had, it only took me like, I don't know how long it took me. But when you start carving things for commissions, things change. So if somebody asks me how much I'm going to charge for something like this, I'm going to say, first of all, I, I, if I do it, it will be my own style. You know, I could put eagles in the corners and put some flowers or whatever, you have Viking ships or cars or whatever you want in there. All right? You know, boats or whatever. But you give them a high price. That's just my bottom line. I'm going to give anybody a high price. And if they want it, if they take the high price, then you do the job and pff, perfect. And if you give them a low price, then you they take the low price then you got to do all this hard work and you're working your ass off and you're stressing your ass off the whole time because it's commission you don't know if they're going to be happy or not does that make sense i charge high for commissions don't care there it is everybody the world's coolest headboard i think it is let me know what you think in the comments and thanks a long lot for uh, following along with this video hard work pays off that ever wicked.